Julie Carter, Policy Analyst. Um, and I've worked with Brett a lot on the river. I um, Part of my work is with, um, I do a lot of clean water acts, federal interviews. We kind of discussed this yesterday. I, I had made this giant um, presentation. We had a summit with the, all the um, Indian tribes in the Northwest recently, talking about these issues. And you know, all the tribes up in the Pacific Northwest are extremely concerned because this, um, you know, and I'm going to pull up a map. It affects Spokane, but it affects all the tribal lands that are around here, and all the projects do. Um, and it so mines coal and oil. Because there's, you can't have one discussion without the other. Because the biggest impact really is the trains, and um, and it's the one that we have the least control over. And um, another thing, you know, to respond to, I get a lot of calls, you know, people, and I appreciate grassroots, and I appreciate our partners. It's been great, um, but it's also it's it's frustrating to me. It's like, oh, you know, the tribes use their treaties, and it's like, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, um, you know. It's hard for the tribes to use their treaties to help, you know, oppose <coughs> these projects, because like what we've been talking about, there's no federal, you know, connection to regulating an oversight over the trains, and that really is where our biggest issue is. And I'll I'll show that in pictures. So I took this last night, kind of late, and I took out all the wordy stuff and <laughs> just brought pictures. So hopefully this will help. But I. The, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, it's hard to get for us to get a handle on this. And I think, you know, in terms of having the, the best option um, and, um, to, and, and the most, um, bur bearing the most burden, we probably have the least um, availability of resources to, to, oppose, to get a hold of these. So I, I put this picture, I found this, on, I love the web, you can get so many cool pictures, but what... My, my executive director gave the talk when he, um, this presentation, and it was really cool because he started saying, you know, he's been on the river fishing for his entire life, and he's a Yakima Indian, and, um, and he just said, this is what the river's become, you know, my people, this was our, this was where we, um, grew up, this is where we, um, fished, but now we have trains, and now we have barges to contend with, and dams, and, you know, we've, constantly had to deal with impediments to exercising our our culture and this is yet another offense. So these are the tribes that I represent um, and this is their current reservations. Um, this is the four Columbia River tribes um, and this is their ceded territory. So, you know, thinking about where the trains come, it's right through our, our lands. Um, this is a this is a map. It's from coal, but it just shows the the direction. I mean, sorry, cut out Spokane, but um, <laughs> no. But I mean, it, it, that's I was trying to highlight right here is is this is where the the, the people um, have fished since time immemorial. Um, I'm I'm actually from New Mexico, and um, and it's it was interesting to take my family back to New Mexico and going through the ruins and show them. I grew up next to the Navajo Reservation. And um, they talk about the, the people back in New Mexico, back in Southwest, would come to Celilo Falls. They would come there to trade. And so, you know, Celilo was the center of commerce. It was the Wall Street, as it were, um, <coughs> of the people back then. So this is, you know, very critical. Again, I pulled this one up. It's a capacity. It shows the railroad lines again. So the main lines that they would come in through Spokane and all the full coal and oil would come down here through the Washington and the Oregon side of the train. Um, empty, they would come back through um, the Yakima Reservation or over Stevens Pass. But because of the, the um, elevation, they can't go there full. So anything that's up here, the, the gateway, um, the Grace Harbor, will all come through the gorge. So um, famous picture, Salilo Falls. This was in the 50s when they were still fishing before the Dalles Dam was um, flooded it. So this was, again, this was a center of commerce, um, extremely important to the culture of the river.
Chicago people and whatever. Um, this doesn't really show very well. So what happened after they built the Dalles Dam, flooded Celilo, this is Celilo, um, the federal government allocated what they call in lieu fishing sites. So they said, okay, we flooded out <laughs> your most important source of fishing. But we're going to give you all these little, these little red marks. This is really poor, and I'm sorry about that. But these are the in lieu sites. We're going to build these sites that you have um, exclusive access so you can exercise your treaty right. Um, this is current. This, um, and so not only do they use the access sites, they also build um, uh, platforms for subsistence, subsistence fisheries. And then we got the rail lines on both sides. So, you know, the tribes have, so I guess, the tribes have access, they have rights to access this area, and, and I guess I'm just going to go back just one. Um, through management programs, through, you know, we had the fish wars in the, in the um, 40s, 50s, 60s. After um, my organization was formed because um, the tribes and the states and the federal government decided there was, we needed to manage the fishery resource. And so we're going to develop this management plan. And so CRIFIC was formed in order to help facilitate the tribes' management of their harvest. Um, part of the agreement was that the tribes would fish Zone 6. So um, everything above Bonneville was allowed for tribal fishers. Um, everything below Bonneville was allocated to the sports fisheries for the states. Um, so, as time has gone by, their, fishery, uh, their fishing right has been limited and limited and limited. So, here we go. We have trains. Um, this was an interesting picture. We were visiting Inlu sites because we were finishing up one of the last Inlu sites, and these are tribal elders from the Yakama Nation. And lo and behold, the coal train comes by. And we were just getting ready to take pictures, so it was actually. <laughs> um, and these are pictures, again, I found them off the web, but they're all pictures of the gorge, and these are oil trains that are currently going through the gorge. And I just, I pulled them out because it's like the river. This is the river. This is what, this is Beacon Rock. Um, you know, the, this is where our people fish. And here is a train coming over a crossing line. There, there's not adequate crossing on most of spaces to get to their sites. So there's actually an immense danger in trail stri uh, train strife um, by tribal fishers trying to access their sites. So it's very dangerous, even at the capacity that is current. Um, here's some more uh, I found that this is an interesting, you know, it's a train of, um, hobbyist took these pictures. But I was looking, I was like, yeah, that's, that's where... Um, the tribal people go and fish, and and here's the train track right next to. There's there's a lot of platform fisheries up here. Um, again, you think about what's going over these lines and next to what the flat fragile environment that's in. And this is what happened. We have one overpass that was built to access one fishing site. That was about five million dollars of taxpayer money, and that is actually I've heard very cheap. And so most of the access to fishing sites um, isn't this nice. Um, I wanted just to quickly, this is pole again, but I wanted to show, this is a, this is a pretty picture from the part of Morrow Amber Energy put it together. And this is what they put their coal. Um, and this is right up in tribal fisheries. These are gill nuts. These are, these are during the fall Chinook season. So these are tribal gill nets. And this is the pretty picture that they, they wanted to put up here. But these are where the tribes are certainly set, uh, right now setting nets. So I'm way <laughs> off my nose. But, <laughs> you know, I think one of the, the biggest issue with the, with the tribes on these is that this is going to severely limit their access to exercise their treaty rights. It's also going to displace. Uh, and that one was Port Western Basin, both in it, correct, covered it. Um, there's also a severe risk of harm to the resources, to the fish resource specifically. Coal, this was um, in Washington State, um, just tipped right over and poured out. I mean, if that had been several miles down in the gorge, it would have been right in the river. 
I thought this was a good photo of what happened, the devastation. And I, you know, I was looking at statistics <clears throat> last year in 2013, there were 26 plus coal train derailments. So um, I didn't add the exploding, <laughs> the explosions, I took those out. But I, I threw this one in because it's, it's a little off, but our tribes are also suffering from the mega load. Um, uh, transport because it all goes through the tribal lands. They've been um, and they don't they do it without any consultation, any um, uh, connection with the tribes. And again, all of these projects have been going through without without any consultation with those who are going to bear the most burden of the projects. Um, and also, you know, I have a these are tribal concerns that. just, you know, some of the, and then here, actually, this is better. So these are the tribes who are officially opposed to coal and some of them oil. Uh, Chris Vegas is going to pass a resolution soon on the oil trains. He's, you know, like Brett emphasized, it's been so fast, and we're all trying to learn and grapple with all these um, things, these projects that are coming out there, but it's the regulatory hole that no one has oversight and no one wants to have oversight and regulation on the trains that we're having this problem with. And we, you know, our, the, the tribal governments that are here have met with the federal government, they've met with the core, they've, you know, had uh, government to government consultation and the core just goes, we don't have any regulation or authority over the trains. And um, I think if there's any message that could take home here is that we need to figure out how to get something, some grasp on those, on, on the rail. Hey, my name is Paul Blackburn. I just wanted to say that on 10.30 on Sunday morning, we're going to take this to sort of the next level. Um, Matthew and I are going to